Hey Atari fans, welcome back to another Speed Build video. Guys, in this one we're going to be continuing the Zelda theme because I got a little bit of flack after doing the large Temple of Time and not actually doing the other piece, which is quite important, which is going to be the Master Sword Shrine itself. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't really think to add it. I think I was probably just tired from all the building previously. But in this build, we're going to be making a Master Sword Shrine that is, again, going to fit the theme from, I guess, the Breath of the Wild, which means everything's going to be a little bit defunct, a little bit kind of, well, destroyed, and hopefully a little bit interesting. Now guys, while the previous build did spawn this kind of concept for the Master Sword Shrine, what actually enables this build is not the actual designs itself of the build or any of the ambient area, it's actually going to be the fact that we can use an enchanted sword, combine it with a rubble maker, and actually just build a little sword shrine. It just fits way too perfectly to not give it a shot. Now guys, that said, if you are looking to see some of these builds done live, do feel free to pop by the Twitch, which is linked down below, if you want to catch me building these, and or if perhaps you're not feeling the mood to go all the way to Twitch and you just want to hang out here, feel free to hit the like, the subscribe, or the uh, little uh, dinner bell thingy so you can know when the next video hits the old YouTube universe. Also because it's super helpful and free to do. But I'm just a guy on the internet and I'm just making random suggestions. Anyways, enough of my blathering nonsense guys, let's get to the build, shall we? Thank you. 
Alright folks, so with our sword shrine build done, very speedily I might add, we are now going to cover some of the materials, or well, all the materials that I actually use to make this build. Now, again guys, I encourage you to pause the video here if you would like to take a closer look at some of the materials, and if you don't recognize them, of course you can match this up later, but I'll cover some of the ones that I think are more interesting. Now, unsurprisingly, with a build that uses a lot of texture for the surrounding area, meaning landscaping, the background, that kind of thing, you're going to see quite a lot of walls and textures. So you're going to see some stone block, which is nothing special, but that combines nicely with a bit of green slab, a bit of craggy stone, as well as some fractured stone, which I don't typically use. We also added some pink slab and some blue slab walls. These are just walls that come from the dungeons and you can make various versions. There's green, there's blue, and there's pink, as you guys probably know. And then we also use some meteorite brick wall. So again, a couple little features and details that do match our previous build, guys, if you didn't see the build for the Temple of Time, there's some similar materials because we wanted to keep the theme, well, the same. Anyways, that said, guys, the other pieces that we use that are going to be familiar, if you did see our previous build, it's going to be the rich mahogany beam and our sandstone column. These are things that we like to use for verticality and have a nice kind of, well, stony facade. And uh, yeah, I think it looks good in this build. And finally, the paints. Now, the paints, guys, are very, very simple. Some gray, some brown, and some green. However, we also did use some aluminum coating as well as some echo coating. And that was just to kind of hide a few things or add a few things and make them a little bit brighter. Uh, I'm not going to really kind of detail all of it, but you can kind of use this to your advantage in certain spots. But I will say we didn't use a lot of it, so don't worry. So yeah, that pretty much covers all of the materials that you're going to need. And with that said, guys, let's move on to the rest of the video. All right, guys, so there you go. There is the Master Sword Shrine done. Of course, guys, this looks great next to our Temple of Time, which if you haven't seen that build, you can check out here or, or here or wherever it is. And it's just a good fit, of course, but I really love some of the tiny details. Again, the Enchanted Sword itself looks phenomenal, but adding those little kind of gold pieces to me stand out a lot. And also having the whole thing kind of broken and cracked, uh, I just I just think it fits the whole theme. Now, one thing I will say that I wish I'd done a little bit more work on was some of the landscaping. Yes, I did build some custom trees, but I think I could have done a little bit more, like a little bit of a water feature maybe to the left of this, closer to the actual build that I did previously for the Temple of Time. But, you know, this is what happens sometimes. Sometimes you'll look and you're like, ah, I really wish I'd done that. But point is, the whole thing, to me, looks great, it fits, and yeah, I like it. Now, of course, that's just my opinion, and I know there are going to be some Zelda aficionados out there that are going to say you've missed this or you missed that. Well, just let me know in the comments down below, uh, or you can let me know what I did right, and if you want to see some particular build in the future, you can let me know that as well. The point is, regardless of your opinion, leave a comment and I'll get back to you. Anyways, guys, that is the end of this video, so thank you so much for watching until the end. As always, thumbs up if you liked it, subs if you loved it. We will see you in the next one.